Welcome to Timber Valley Woodworking. In this video, I'm going to be building a live edge walnut shelf. After running my walnut through the planer, I head over to the jointer to score up the edges of my boards. When choosing my lumber at the mill, I try to pick the straightest pieces that I can to avoid jointing problems or having to use the planer sled. I then proceed to cut the rough length and width of my pieces on the table saw. Before recording this, I had already planed up the live edge side panels for the shelf, so we're going to jump right into epoxy work. I first tape over any holes in the board where epoxy might leak through from the back side. I then flip over the boards to the side where I'm going to be performing my pour. For this type of fill, I'm going to be using River R Epoxy. A 2 to 1 mix with some black pigment is perfect for filling up knots and imperfections in black walnut. Next, I'll build a dam around the pores with a hot glue gun to keep the epoxy from getting away from me. And after it cools, I can begin to fill the areas that I prepared, making sure to take my time and let it all sink in. Save those syringes that come with your kids' antibiotics, because they are perfect for filling in the tiny stuff. The epoxy I'm using takes 24 hours to fully cure, so by the next day, I can pull the tape off and throw it through the planer to flatten it. It kind of feels like pulling the film off your new smartphone. After a few passes through the planer, then the real work begins. My planer sends them out pretty smooth, so I like to start with 120 grit and just give it a good cleaning. Man, I wish I could sand that fast in real life. This gives me a nice clean surface to start filling in the pinholes. I like to use Black Star Bond, medium thick, with a little activator spray, it's ready to sand almost instantly. And sometimes you need two or even three coats to get it just right. After the imperfections were filled, I gave it a sand up to 180 just to see how it would look. And I think it turned out fantastic. For this particular project, I'm going to be mortising the shelves into the sides. So I began to mark the layout for each individual shelf height. After I'm finished with the layout, I stand the boards up on the side to choose the best order and direction to install them. Then I head over to the table saw to cut their final width. Lining the boards up with their marks, I can then finish tracing out the mortises. I then grab my compact router, put in a 3 quarter inch bit, and measure the offset I need for the square I'll be clamping down to use as a guide. I'm routing out the bulk of the waste in two passes for a final depth of 3 eighths. Coming back later to clean up the corners with the chisels I restored in a previous video. After I'm satisfied with the test fit, I finished the rest of the mortises in a few short seconds. That's a lie, it took me about an hour. Per side. Like a glove. And now everybody's favorite part, the sanding. And more sanding. And even more sanding until I've got all the shelves and sides sanded up to 320 grit, in time for a pre-glue up test fit. After nearly forgetting to cut out the notch for the baseboard, I can get to gluing up this bad boy. I'm using PL Fast Grab Construction Adhesive to get the top and bottom shelf set in an effort to make the rest of the glue up much easier. After setting the shelves with even pressure, making sure to square up front to back, I then add corner clamps to square up the boards in the other direction. The rest of the glue up I'll be using Tight Bond 3. But really, a thousand woodworkers are going to tell you that any PVA glue will work just fine. After leaving the project to sit overnight, I can then come back and remove all the clamps. If you're wondering what the gray strips are, 
They're offcuts from a gym floor I installed last year. As I'm sure you can tell, I work out. Moving on, I want to add a little extra detail, so I start setting up to install some plugs. I do have a previous video that goes into a little bit more detail if you want to check it out. But essentially, you drill some holes in the size of plugs that you want to install, and I'm making my plugs using a core bit of the same size over at the drill press, punching an inch deep into an inch and a half thick offcut. Afterwards, I remove the plugs by lopping them off at the bandsaw. And be sure to make a few extras. After squirting some glue on some parchment paper, I roll the ends of the plugs through and use a mallet to hammer them home. You can remove the excess with a flush cut saw or even a Japanese pole saw if you put down a little protection. And then sand it smooth. After I was satisfied with my test, I could then drill and plug the rest of the holes. I can then come back and clear off the waste my favorite way with my hand planer. Silky smooth. A quick sand and we're in business. And for all the naysayers, I put the plugs in away from the grain on purpose to allow them to pop. Bringing us to my favorite part, finishing. This is where Odie's super duper makes its magic. Just watch as it uncovers that crisp walnut grain. And this stuff is beautiful. Just look at some of that figure. Thanks for making it through to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel, all you have to do is like, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up. You can also go back and check out some of my other videos.